What's up people, welcome to our video series Cost of Building in Ghana. If you happen to be a first timer, I will encourage you to check the previous episodes so that you have a fair idea where we've come from. That said, let's get straight into episode 9 where we will be discussing the conduit pipe fittings for each of the apartments on the three bedroom side. So what you're seeing on your screen is the ground floor and what I need you to bear in mind is when you're doing the fittings you should pay attention to your usual need in a typical house so you would notice as you watch the video that when it gets to where we will be living that's on the last floor we have a lot of sockets in each of the rooms so this way you don't have to struggle with sockets as you can see on the screen, it appears they are basically doing a manual, the manual job. The thing is, I noticed one interesting thing about the artisans. They believe the manual is faster. They don't have the tools, even though I have them, they prefer the manual. For instance, the electricians occasionally will use my hammer drill. But when it comes to the angle grinder, they don't want it because of the dust. Indeed, it's slower, but it's less work. But for them, it's time is money, so they want to quickly finish and move to the next job. Whereas I would want to um, save some energy and not um, get too intense with, with my muzzles. So this is the last floor. One of the things we did was to make sure that at least for every room we had one socket which had which was on a different breaker the rationale behind this is if for whatever reason a breaker goes down or a fuse goes down for a room at least in the middle of the night if you have one socket working you will be able to manage until the following day when you get an electrician to come check it out for you this approach is more expensive because you would need a little more cables to do the additional run to a different circuit breaker but uh, we believe it is worth it because just imagine if you happen to be working late at night on your computer in your bedroom and then the socket trip you now have to step out and go to the living room i understand it's the same apartment but the inconvenience at least will be avoided compared to where you have all the sockets on one circuit breaker or fuse where if there's any trip you are basically not going to be able to do anything in that room one other thing is we also paid attention to where the bed should be and occasional movement of the bed because sometimes it's ideal that you change the location of your bed to give your room a little bit of a new look so we try to put sockets at locations where if we change the bed we wouldn't have so much of a problem assessing sockets and also one other thing is the fan switches, we try to put all of them near where the bed should be. I've never liked the idea where you have to basically go turn on the fan at the entrance when you are in bed. Another thing that many people forget is the vanity mirrors. So in your washroom, make sure provision is made so that you don't have to now chisel or lay wires for your vanity mirrors. We also decided to go for smart switches. We will talk about the advantages in the bonus discussion. So we didn't have to do control switches by the, the beds. This is for where we will be staying but for the other units even though we will be installing smart switches we just went ahead to fix the conduit fixtures for a control switch though we will not run any cables through them this is just a contingency because you wouldn't know which tenants you would have so in situations where the smart switch isn't going really well in terms of tenant use we can just go ahead and install normal switches as you can see we have the pipes already laid down because we had to do the wiring 
we made a mistake by laying the pipes down before doing the flash drain and there are two lessons that I want you to pay attention to at this point one of them is don't compromise on quality always make sure your materials you are buying are of the highest quality and the second lesson is do not skip steps because of lack of funds so I'll start with the first one so we we make sure that all our pipes the conduit pipes and then the PVC pipes that we use are all interplus now interplus it's of good quality and indeed we got this tested when we made a mistake and did the lead the, did the wiring before going ahead with the with the plastering the way the pipes were mishandled if they were not of good quality they would all have been broken and I can tell you none of the pipes got broken with the wheelbarrows passing on and so on and so forth if we bought cheaper ones I'm sure the story will be different when we're buying the, the pipes they, they were cheaper ones they, they have these white ones and other cheaper pipes somewhere even as low as about half of the price of interplus but we still went ahead and bought the interplus and we really are reaping the benefit even before it goes into the screen so the, the second lesson is at the time of doing the wiring the money that we had left wasn't enough to do the plastering but at least we had cables already so we thought the little money that was left we could use that to pay for the workmanship for the for the wiring so that is what we did and down two months down the line when we started the plastering we noticed that the wheelbarrows had to be moved on the pipes for the plastering to go on it didn't cause any problem like i've already indicated because of the quality of pipe we the conduit pipes we bought but the process is you have to chisel the walls and lay the pipes on the walls and leave the ones on the ground until plastering is done on hindsight i would prefer to just go ahead and do the plastering before laying the pipes on the on the floor you lose nothing anyway Okay, so let's look at the cost for the conduit fittings. As always, we would we're going to sort either by font or cell color. I've already colored them. So unlike what we've always done, we are not including the workmanship for the electricals because with that we we were paid we are paying 2100 for each unit. So we sometimes pay them ahead of um, the job they are supposed to do. The 2100 includes the pipes that they are going to lay in the iron rods before the casting and then the chiseling of the wall and then the passing of the wire through the conduit you would notice that some of the items are already in different color colors what that means is they were already captured in the previous episode so for instance the pipes we usually buy more than we need so we included this in the price prices of the floors so we are not going to add them to this The 
total cost of materials it's um, 2274 know that it's exclusive of all these other colored ones because we've already captured them in the second prizes of the previous episode so for those who just want to know the total cost of the materials i think if you add the other ones we've added already it should bring us to about six thousand ghana cities which is about a thousand dollars so these materials are basically what was used for the casting piping and then the conduit for the three units at the three bedroom side. We still have a few of the boxes. That should be enough for one of the two bedroom units. Okay, so let's get to the bonus discussion. As I've indicated earlier, it's going to be about uh, the advantages of smart switches. The first thing is convenience. With the smart switch, you're able to control it from your phone. So anywhere you are in your house, you should be able to turn on lights and turn them off without having to get up. You know how it is like when you are seated somewhere and you just want to turn off the light. Sometimes quite annoying getting up to go turn off the light. I know, I know there are they are control switches, especially if you are in bed, but you cannot have control switches everywhere in your kitchen, in your living room. It's not possible. Sometimes you forget to turn off the light in the study. You can just quickly turn them off on the phone. Another thing with the convenience is you can actually um, turn the lights on whilst you are away from home, but this will require internet. So once the, you have internet at home, you just need to connect the smart switch to your router. That's your internet connection. And then on your phone at work, you can decide to turn it off at a specific time. You can also program the switches to turn on the light at a specific time. This is good for security, especially when you are away. The misconception people have about the smart switches is that um, you need internet for it to work. The, the need for internet is only relevant if you want to do remote controls, like from where you want to turn them off and on whilst away from but if you are within the house all you need is just a router which you can get for about um, 25 dollars you don't need any sophisticated router just a normal router or a wi-fi hub so that you can connect the smart switches to and also pair your phone to the smart switches so internet is not a necessity unless you want the add-on benefits Another advantage is that most of the smart switches that you get from $25 and above are compatible with almost all the AI virtual assistants that are available. That is a Siri, Google Assistant and uh, Alexa so you can easily control the operation of your line with voice commands. Some of the concerns I get from my colleagues is what if your phone is messed up, how would you turn the light on and off? The thing is, all smart switches are like traditional switches. They can be turned on and off manually. The smart feature is just, is just an addition. So in cases where you don't have your phone, you still can walk to the switch and, and then just turn it off and on like the normal switches. The downside will definitely be the cost because if you want to get an average smart switch, you should be looking at $25. Another disadvantage is smart switches require a neutral line. So unlike the conventional switches where you have just two cables used to power them, you need a third line for smart switches. So this tends to add your wire cost. There are options for non-neutral ones, but I wouldn't advise you to get those because they usually have capacitors and usually the capacitors be easily spoil. So if you are building, it's better you make provisions for that. Just put in the neutral wires so that you don't have to use those improvised smart switches with the capacitors. Plus, there's a new construction that most of us will be doing so we can easily put in the neutral wires. So when we get to the episode with the wiring, I will touch more on this. And uh, I'm sure when we start the fittings of the switches also, the episode covering that will throw more light on this. 
so that is it for this episode feel free to post all your questions in the comment section below you no know, we certainly do answer all questions on um, sundays thank you for watching so watch out for the next episode and see you in a bit enjoy people